Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. It's good to see you. Uh, Lou Shields here. Thanks for tuning back in. Uh, so it's been about eight weeks since I got my Bronco and I couldn't be any happier with this thing. I've done just under 8,000 miles on this already. Uh, finally got my van back. It was broken um, right after I bought this thing. It, the alternator froze up and uh, I was just like, I just put all my money in the world out to get this doggone thing behind me. So the old trans is going to have to sit for a bit, but now it's back and running and I can use it for doing work and music stuff. And uh, this one will be, you know, for fun and, and driving around in the Driftless region and taking trips and doing a little trail riding as I originally intended. Uh, but it was my daily for, for some time. Um, so I put more miles than I wanted to in the beginning, uh, but they were fun miles, that's for sure. And I drove this thing on the interstate on the super slab on the windy roads and everything else, you know, and um, so I was going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, for me, for what I'm doing, it's been awesome. Um, as I said, I have this big, you know, tall passenger van kind of deal, um, <clears throat> and I can fit anything I want in it. And so as a musician, uh, I had to really streamline my gear for playing music i have a pa that i use and guitars and all kinds of stuff you know that i bring with me banjos whatever and so i had to streamline that stuff down which was great because it kind of forced me to go a little more minimal and uh, everything fit in the back uh of that little two-door back there um and uh you know it it brought the back end down a little bit it was almost like a leveling kit in reverse i guess you might say maybe about a, a half inch or something like that. Didn't really affect handling too bad. I actually wheeled it with my full music gear kit in it. You'll see some videos coming up pretty soon uh, regarding some of that stuff, you know. Um, some people are asking about highway noise. Uh, as I have kind of said in the comments here and there, uh, once I put that trail racks rack on with the side uh, racks, I did notice a little bump in noise. Um, I was mostly driving 55 mile an hour roads around here at that point, and it wasn't barely noticeable at all. Um, when you hit 70 on the interstate, you can hear it, it's, it, but it's not as bad as having the window down, even cracked, you know, it's just like a slight wind noise. Um, when the wind is blowing and you're in a storm, well, yeah, definitely you'll, you'll have some, some noise going on there. But I'll tell you, I just drove through a big nasty storm in my sealed up transit van and that thing was just as loud if not worse in a windstorm that this would be I, I, you know i think any car is going to be like that that is not a luxury vehicle with all kinds of sound deadening interior so you know i would say don't let that detract you from buying one <clears throat> you just got to remember that this is a removable top and it's it's you know an off-roader it's it's not meant to be luxury uh and, and of course the price is ridiculous but the price on all cars are, is ridiculous now. This was the base model, you know, and, and uh, technically with the Sasquatch and barely any extras, this thing was coming up to 39000 when I bought it, you know. So um, for me, I've never spent that much money in my life on a vehicle. Sadly, that's almost average or just a little above average, you know, as they say. thirty, I think $30,000, $27,000 is as cheap as you're going to get for a lot of vehicles now. Um, but most vehicles aren't going to do what this thing does, you know, and, and, uh, that extra Sasquatch package was totally worth it for me. Uh, and you know, I just can't say enough about how capable it is right out of the box for the average person that's going to do a little bit off-roading. It's probably all you're ever going to need for the professional rock crawler. Of course, you're going to need something purpose built, or you're going to need to get up into the Raptor or something like that. Um, you know, but for, for most of us, you know, this is awesome. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, rock chips, everybody asks about that. Well, yeah, yeah, rock chips. I live on a gravel road right here. Um, and <clears throat> day one, the doggone thing was was flipping uh, rocks all over the place. You know, it feels like since I put some miles on those tires, they've mellowed out a little bit in that. You know, I put those Fab Fours uh, rock sliders on and that helped deflect them a little bit. But, you know, the damage was already done day one, and that, that is a big bummer. What else could I do? You know, the thing, 
I hadn't even signed the papers on it and I already had rock chip damage, you know, and it was just ridiculous. So for those of us that are rural, <clears throat> I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to probably have to do some repainting and some, some other kind of thing to put on the bottom, you know. Um, I know the fenders, from what I understand, are titanium. I'm not sure what the rocker panels are. Those might be metal, so i uh, going to have to figure that out. But for the mall crawler folks that will never go on a gravel road or anything else, well, you know, good luck to you, and I hope you, you keep your chips down to a minimum. But, of course, it is an off-roader for me, and it is a farm vehicle. going to be using it for work and doing all kinds of fun stuff around here. And so it's going to get a little dirty. It's going to get a little chipped up. You know, that's just how things go with these vehicles. All I can say is I'm glad I got what I've got now and uh, thankful for that. hope this video helps a little bit. Uh, please check out the other ones. Give us a like and subscribe. Thank you.